Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the Honor 8. This is a unlocked smartphone from Huawei, and it costs $399 as you see it. Really attractive phone, uh, works on most carriers throughout the world without a contract. Of course, it does not work with Verizon or Sprint here uh, in the United States. I know a lot of you are Verizon and Sprint subscribers. This is not going to be one of those phones you can use uh, on your network, which stinks because there's so many great phones like this one coming out for good prices that we just can't get on those networks at the moment. Now, I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Huawei. So when we're done with this review, we send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware here and then we'll take a closer look at its performance. Now this is an all glass phone. It's metal on the side, uh, glass on the back, and glass on the front. This is the blue one. There's a black and a white one available. In the U.S., the blue one here is going to be exclusive to Best Buy for a few months. I'll put an affiliate link down below in the video description. It looks really cool when the light reflects off of it, but uh, this is definitely going to be prone to uh, breakage if you drop the phone the right way. So you'll probably cover up this really beautiful backing with a case. Maybe you'll take the case off at night just to uh, look at it. It looks really cool and mesmerizing here as you uh, turn it around in the light. I think it's got like a 15 layer uh, glass panel there on the back. Very attractive uh, overall design. Now they probably thought about the fact that their phone is so slippery because if you drop it in the first 90 days and break the display, they will replace it for free. It's a single incident insurance policy, but uh, it is free with your purchase. So uh, you don't have to pay extra for that uh, little bit of coverage there. So if you break your brand new phone in the first three months, they will uh, cover the repair for you, which is a really cool thing to start seeing uh, different approaches to customer service as this market gets more competitive. Now it's got a 5.2 inch 1080p display, an LTPS display. Looks really nice, good viewing angles on it. Uh, this is not an OLED screen. It is a little on the cold side for color temperature, a little more blue perhaps than some other phones are, but uh, not bad at all. It's very comfortable to read on, very sharp as a result of having a high DPI display here. So it looks great. Four gigabytes of RAM. Now it's powered by a Curran 950 processor. This is a Huawei chipset that they manufacture themselves. A decent CPU. It actually performs as well as uh, other devices that I have used at this price point with different processors. It seems to be uh, very snappy and responsive on apps and email and web browsing and those sorts of things. Uh, but it doesn't perform as well graphically as you'll see in some of our gaming benchmarks in a few minutes. So if you're into very high-end Android games, those will not work as well on this as they might on, for example, a OnePlus 3 or a other smartphone that has a faster GPU. So just keep that in mind as we're uh, going through the rest of the review here. I'm going to pop out the SIM tray now because this will run on two different networks. So you can plug in two uh, nano SIM cards and have two different LTE networks available to you. Again, no Verizon or Sprint here in the US though. Uh, but if you want to put in an SD card, uh, you can just slide in the SD card here and use that instead of your second SIM. So you can't have two SIMs and an SD card, but you can have uh, one SIM and an SD card. The 399 phone that you see here has 32 gigabytes of internal storage. There's a 64 gigabyte version available for 449. And on the bottom of the phone, you have the speaker. It doesn't sound all that great. It's very tinny, so it's not good for music, but it's good enough for a phone call, I guess. USB Type-C down here for charging, that new reversible USB standard. It supports fast charging, but only with the Huawei charger. So you can't use anyone else's uh, fast charger with it. Uh, you have to use theirs, otherwise it charges at a slower regular USB charging rate. It's, I think it's the one amp charging rate also when you're not on their fast charger. So you'll get about half the battery back uh, in about half an hour uh, with their fast charger, much slower without it. Headphone microphone jack on that side. Over here, you've got your power switch and your volume rocker. The power switch is textured a little bit so you can separate the two uh, when you're just feeling around with the phone. On the top, they have an infrared blaster so you can control your home stereo and, and home theater components with this. Uh, so it's got some universal remote capabilities built in. Why not put that in if you can do it? Uh, and then on the back is your fingerprint reader and I'll show you how that works real quick. Very fast, we're seeing very fast uh, fingerprint reading on these phones. So I'll just uh, place my finger here on the back and you can see how fast it unlocks. So very quick to get the phone up and running. You don't need to push a button first to unlock it either. So as long as your finger rests against it, it will just spring to life and you are ready to use your phone. Now, one thing you can't escape from on this phone is how much this looks and feels like an iPhone, both on the outside and the inside too. So take a look. The casing is 
wrapping around the device the same way, very similar curves to that, very similar way the glass curves around the outer casing of the phone too. So very much an iPhone look and feel on the outside. There's no camera bump though, so they made an improvement on that. But even inside, when you start poking around on their uh, skin that they put over Android 6 that powers this phone, uh, they made this Android phone feel very much like an iPhone. Look at the uh, user interface on the uh, settings screen here. Even that switch to turn on airplane mode is similar to what you would see on an iPhone. Uh, the, just the home screen here where all the apps are organized, the folder structure, uh, so much of the iPhone UI has kind of made its way into their Android skin. And I think it's kind of a distraction because I'm really quite pleased with what Google has done with Android over the last couple of versions to really differentiate themselves and make a very attractive and intuitive user interface. And over and over again, manufacturers you know, put over their own skins that impact performance and change the way things look and feel. And I just don't think it's necessary anymore. I've been reading around that uh, Huawei is planning to update this interface and uh, freshen it up a bit. So I hope they do that. I would love to be able just to turn all this extra stuff off and make it work like a stock Android phone because I don't think there's anything wrong with Android that people have to skin it like this. But uh, that's what they did here. So you will have a very different departure from a standard Google interface on it. Now you'll notice in the back of the phone here, we have two camera lenses, and that is because there are two cameras built in. They both shoot a picture at the exact same time, but one captures the black and white information, the other one captures the color information, and then in software, it merges those things together uh, to give you the output image. The result is presumably better sharpness, better contrast. I am seeing uh, some pretty decent images coming out of this device and even get some degree of depth of field. And I'll dig a little bit further into some of the things you can tweak on these cameras in a second, but I wanted to show you some image samples first. So you can see uh, still images look nice. They're nice and sharp, good contrast, especially out in good daylight. Low light isn't as good. I was expecting a little more out of this in darker environments. You can see a shot I did here in a closet, which was very dimly lit and it does okay, but it's still just as noisy as you might see on other phone cameras. So nothing great there. Video is very good on this. I can shoot up to 1080p at 60 frames per second with it. Uh, looks nice. I'll load up some of those 1080p 60 clips into my uh, secondary channel. A link will be down below in the video description. There is no onboard stabilization though. So you definitely need to get your phone uh, locked down somewhere where it doesn't get bumped around too much, especially if you're walking. So there's no optical image stabilization and no uh, digital st stabilization either. So you will see some bumping around as you're uh, moving with the phone, but the image quality is good. And you're even getting some depth of field uh, while you're out shooting video with it too, where the foreground is in focus and the background uh, is blurry. It looks pretty nice. So what I want to do now is show you some of the camera features. I'm not going to show you all of them because there are a lot, but there are some uh, that are kind of unique and worth mentioning. Let's take a look. I'm going to be connecting my phone up via a wireless connection to a Microsoft Miracast adapter. I reviewed that a couple of months ago. So if you see any glitches in the images, it's due to that wireless connection. Let's have a look. Now you can see the camera app on here looks a lot like the iPhone camera app. All the controls are in the same place. It even looks the same, even down to the shutter button. But uh, there are a lot more features when you start pulling around some of the menus here that we will not have time to get to today, but we'll cover a few of the more unique things that I found of interest on this. The first is uh, this aperture enhancement mode. And this is kind of a mix of a uh, digital enhancement thing along with uh, something you can do when you have two cameras on the device. And what this does is it uh, simulates what you might do with a digital SLR and that you could uh, for example, have an image where the foreground is in focus and the background is blurry. So what you can do here is uh, I'll tap on the Blackmagic logo here. And then if you look in the background, you can see how it gets uh, less blurry as I adjust this uh, slider here. Now what's cool though is that after I take the picture, I can make more adjustments later. So I can actually change the focus of the image uh, after I've taken it. So here's a picture I shot of my dog in the wide aperture mode. And you can see that uh, she is in focus and the rest of the image is kind of blurred out. Now, if I go over to this icon here and uh, tap on it, I can change the focus now after the fact. So I can maybe uh, tap on the turtle sandbox thing over there and you can see the dog gets blurred out and the sandbox gets into focus. Now, there are some artifacts. It's not perfect. You can see around the uh, edges of the dog's ear up there that it's a little bit flaky, but uh, it is pretty cool that it can do this. And it's basically uh, able to look at both images that both of these cameras are taking and determine the distances between the camera and the object to uh, better guess how to do the blur. So this blur is not an optical blur. It's doing something in software, uh, but it's making a very good guess based on the fact that it has some uh, positional data from those two lenses. So you'll see here, if I go back to my aperture mode here and adjust that aperture up to 16, uh, you can see the image is 
uh, pretty much in focus all the way around. So this is really what it took, but uh, through the software tricks and through the data it has from two lenses, it can uh, make this actually a pretty accurate representation of what it would look like if I actually had a uh, shallow depth of field lens attached to my camera. Pretty cool stuff, and it works really nicely, especially when you have an image like this. Now this only works when you activate that wide aperture mode when you take the picture. So you have to turn that mode on and then take the picture, otherwise you're going to just have a uh, locked in focus from the image that you took. But it's nice to have this mode, especially if you're out somewhere and you want a, a fancier looking image of you or your friends, you can get it down on this thing without lugging your big SLR around. And they have some manual controls here too. So you can tap on pro photo mode and uh, what it will do is pull up a menu where you can select uh, components of the phone's exposure system to set manually. So you can set things like the shutter rate, the ISO for uh, sensor sensitivity. Uh, they even have a nice focusing mechanism on here too with a, a draggable dial to get the fo focus exactly where you want it to be. Uh, some of those settings will also carry over into video mode here. So if I uh, go back over to pro video, I can do the focus in a similar fashion as well. I do think though you have to set the focus Focus and then start recording. I don't think you can adjust the focus while you're in the middle of recording, which is the only unfortunate thing about it, but uh, pretty nice. You can very uh, finely control the focus dial here uh, to get what you're looking for and have some exposure controls too. There's actually a lot more to the camera system than uh, we, we can cover in this video, including some features like being able to lock it down on a tripod and drawing with a flashlight and sparklers. A lot of cool stuff that is really fun, and you can see they really put a focus in, sorry, about developing that camera system for, uh, for folks. And I I think that's a big differentiator on this one versus other phones at its price point. Now, uh, I want to show some gaming now, and we've got a Goat Simulator running here. This is an open world 3D Android game. It seems to be running uh, just fine on this. And this game also runs very well on low end hardware too, but it runs at a slightly faster frame rate here. But uh, what I did notice when I ran some benchmarks that measure how well this phone would do on more hardcore games, things that serious gamers are going to want to play, uh, it doesn't do as well. In fact, the score surprised me. I got a score of 970 on the 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme benchmark test. That compares to 2,508 that we got on the OnePlus 3, which is a similarly priced phone uh, in the same generation of phones as this one. That one just came out a few months ago. So I think for hardcore gamers, you might want to look at something else. I think for most casual users, this is going to be just fine. It's going to run Goat Simulator well, and certainly all the casual games you might play. Uh, what was most interesting, though, is that when I dug into that test a bit and looked at the physics score, uh, this phone performed the same or better on some of those physics tests, which pushes the CPU, the processor portion of this phone, uh, versus the graphics portion. So the, the main processor on here is very fast, which means that for all the smartphone tasks you might do, like web browsing and email and whatnot, uh, this is going to do just fine and perform where all those other phones perform. It's just on the higher end of the gaming spectrum, this won't do as well. Now, battery life on the phone is very good. I think you will definitely get through a work day. Uh, the more you do with it, obviously, the more that impacts it. So I think if you're using the phone and checking email and doing some web browsing, maybe watching a, clip, a quick video clip or so, uh, you can definitely get through a work day with it. The more you tax it, the more games you play. If you're doing a lot of Goat Simulator, uh, you'll definitely impact the battery more than uh, just using it as a casual smartphone user. But I think in most cases, you'll get through a work day with it. I was very pleased with the battery life on it. There's also some gesture controls you can do too. So if I take my knuckle out here, yes, my knuckle, and tap on it twice, it'll take a screen grab for me. Uh, if I then take two knuckles out and tap those down on the screen, it will start a video capture too. So you can record uh, the screen uh, output onto the device itself and uh, grab it for gaming purposes or something else. So you can do that with two knuckles. There's another mode where you can draw stuff with your knuckle and have it uh, summon apps and whatnot. So a different approach to things. And what's funny is that it definitely knows the difference between a knuckle and two fingers. So if I just tap my finger here twice, it doesn't do anything. If if I tap my knuckle twice, it pulls up the screen grab. So there must be some surface area thing that uh, differentiates uh, the finger from the knuckle. I did find though, I got some false alarms when I had my phone wrapped around my, my, my uh, hand like this. So sometimes on these, these thin bezel phones, your hand skin might come in contact with the screen. And that often confuses a lot of these Android phones and this one is no exception. So on a few occasions, it was pulling up the, uh, the video capture or the screenshot uh, without me actually putting my knuckle to the screen. So it's not a foolproof system, but it certainly works okay. And the fingerprint sensor on the back is also a button, so you can configure that to be a shutter button, a home button, uh, all sorts of different configuration options that you can do on the back and on the front with your knuckle uh, to just uh, configure away and you can have a very personalized experience on this thing. So overall a very nice phone. Not the best for gamers, but uh, other than that I think it's a, a really nicely built phone, even if it does remind me quite a bit of an 
iPhone. I really like the dual camera system. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that from other manufacturers moving forward. Uh, decent battery life, and I really love the blue color on this one too. Really cool phone. A decent price and a decent uh, performing phone for the money. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.